Hi, I'm Peter DeCampo. I'm a freelance photographer, and I'm going to talk to you today about a project I started to promote a new kind of storytelling. Everyday Africa is a collection of mobile phone photography striving to rise above the media-driven stereotypes of the continent as a place of nothing but conflict, poverty, war, and disease. We featured about 30 photographers, and out of our regular contributors, most of them are African, and all of them have spent a significant time living on the continent. The project started when Austin Merrill and I were traveling in Ivory Coast with a grant from the Pulitzer Center in 2012. Since then, we've been featured in the world's leading media outlets, places like National Geographic, The New York Times, but even more important to us is the global network that we've created and our education work that we've expanded on with the Pulitzer Center's help in the last couple years. In the four years since we started, we've inspired dozens of everyday feeds around the world, all with the goal of promoting local norms and global commonalities, from Latin America to Asia, Iran to the USA, Rio to the Bronx, with a collective audience of over one million people. This all feeds into the education work that we do. Our curriculum is designed to teach middle and high school students, like you, about a vision of Africa that you may not have seen commonly before and about how journalism gets made. We hope you use this to start exploring the stereotypes that affect you in your own lives while also learning practical photography so that you can start your own everyday project for your school, neighborhood, or city by the end of the program. All right, let's talk about some photos. So this first picture is in a place called Grand Bassam in Ivory Coast, which is in West Africa. Um, and it's a, a, a beach town, a beach community, and a common uh, vacation spot for local people. And you know, I photographed this scene specifically because it was the kind of thing that I thought, you know, most people don't normally see when they see photos of Africa. A nice hotel, a big fancy swimming pool, etc. So this is the main photo that I ended up with, and I'll lead you through some of the photos that I shot to try to get there. And you can see that I'm sort of moving around and reframing it. Some of the, some of the photos along the way are sort of off kilter a little bit. And that's because I'm sort of, you know, establishing exactly how I want to frame it as I go. And then, you know, there's a lot of things happening in this picture. There's all these different groups of people. And so I wanted to make sure that I had a photo in which you can see all those different groups, but there's sort of one thing catching your eye. And that the different groups of people aren't overlapping with each other. You know, you can see how in some of them there's someone's arm going over someone's face or something like that. So finally, when this boy was in that sort of center spot, you know, crouched over uh, with that umbrella above him, etc. And each person sort of has their own moment. So I think your eye goes to that boy first, and then you start looking around the rest of the frame at what else is happening. And then you can see that after that, I, you know, I kept shooting pictures. Um, you know, I tend to shoot a lot as I go, right, to try to make sure that I've got the best one. Some of these may also be usable, um, but afterwards, when I was editing, I settled on this one as the, the final one. Um, similarly, uh, this is a scene just next to that hotel down on the beach um, of this woman photographing her child and all these other children um, sort of playing around them. And, you know, again, I saw that something was happening. I sort of saw this moment unfolding. And so I kept shooting and I shot, you know, afterwards as well. But the real moment to me was when she was crouching down to take the photo and especially the the kid in the background behind her with the uh, arms outstretched and all of these different silhouettes that you can sort of see clearly enough to see each of their own movements. A lot of the times photography for me is about forming a relationship with people and spending a lot of time with them. This photo of this cocoa worker, I was actually with Austin, the other co-founder of the project, and he was chatting with these guys, you know, he was interviewing them and I sort of just hung out as well and occasionally also asked questions and things like that. And so we sort of formed a relationship with these people. And again, you know, there are a bunch of photos that I tried to take, um, but the one of him just sort of with, you know, half of his face in shadow and the other half very brightly lit, you know, I think that you just sort of get a brief glimpse of what it is to be one of these guys. So these, um, these sacks that they're sitting on are sacks full of, of cocoa beans, and their job basically is to lift these big heavy things and throw them into trucks. 
um, so that they can then be brought to ships and then shipped to uh, places all over the world. And sometimes what I'm looking for with Everyday Africa photos is contrast, you know, that idea of the Africa as we think it is, um, you know, in, in poverty or in sort of a, a, an old fashioned kind of view, we could say, um, but clashing with that more modern Africa that, that as someone who's lived there, uh, I also know to be very true. And so here you have, you know, a woman that's in a boat that's actually, this boat is just bringing us out to a, another sort of beach community. This is actually in, in Ghana. Um, and behind her, even as she's there taking a selfie, behind her you have this guy in a much more traditional sort of fishing style boat. And, you know, uh, I couldn't quite have planned for that as perfectly as, as it happened. Um, I started photographing her as she was photographing herself and then it just happened that this guy ended up in the background and that was just perfect and that really made the picture. Talking about photo editing and sort of how things relate to each other, how you might make an exhibition of work, how you might combine your photos with someone else's or with your whole class's uh, body of work that you've, you're creating, um, this is a, a gallery of photos from, that used to be the opening gallery of the Everyday Africa website. And the way that I chose these photos was, you know, photos are often like poems and you want each line to sort of run into the next line. So whether it's a bit of color um, that relates from one photo to the next or a stance, you can see that a lot of these first photos are very blue and red. And then they kind of get into themes that this, you know, this one on, from Egypt is on women. This next one on, from South Africa is also sort of about, you know, powerful women. Um, but then it's also about athleticism. So that sort of leads us to this photo of rollerblading, etc. And it goes on like that with me sort of, you know, specifically choosing uh, visual things that seem to tie it together and, and lead us from one photo into the next. And sometimes it's even uh, a question of, you know, the direction of the, the sort of characters of the photo. You can see here that this guy's, he's holding his three children and he's looking off the frame. And the next photo I choose is uh, a group of people that are sort of looking back at him. So this works really well on a website, um, but it also really works really well uh, if it was printed, if it were, you know, on the wall as an exhibition. And again, here we're sort of looking at color. This is this sort of washed out orange in several of these photos in a row. And then here, what we're actually looking at is, you know, the theme that sort of carries here is this sort of photo that she's up against, uh, you know, this artwork. And then you have a sort of similar theme of this sort of fake landscape taking place, even in the midst of a real beach landscape. And here their expressions just sort of mirror each other, even though one is a photograph of an old photograph and then one is a, you know, an original photo. Here you have the, the fake, uh, nature scene relating to the real nature scene and it's all these it's it's specifically arranged in a way that is supposed to make us question the way that we think about africa and everyday africa is not supposed to be about shying away from problems um, this is uh, someone on a soccer team in sierra leone who uh, lost his leg in that country's civil war and is now uh, there's actually a very well-known soccer team uh, made up of amputees. Um, and, you know, like I said, Everyday Africa is not about pretending that problems don't exist, but it is about trying to show them in the context of other photos that, you know, give us a better idea of what daily life is like, so that when we see the problems, we might actually be inclined to pay even more attention to them. And also, even though it seems sort of counterintuitive, we want even the problem photos to have a sort of visual draw to them, to be beautiful in their own way, just as a way of making people pay attention to them. I know this was just a brief intro, but I hope you can start applying some of these lessons as you begin to document your own lives, your own families, your own communities. If you don't become a storyteller in your own neighborhood and start telling the stories of the people that live there, who else will? So here are some questions to think about as you get started. How does representation affect you? If you had one picture to represent your community, what would that be a picture of? What do you want the world to know about you and your life and your home? How could you look at your own life as a journalist? What are the important issues that affect your community? 
and how can you find stories that illustrate those issues? That's it for now. Have fun and good luck.